our hands in total praise unto whom unto the Lord is God worthy of the praise if you would but for a few minutes just give God glory because if it had not been for him we would have been consumed by the things that we were going through but how many of you know that he's a worthy God that he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ask or think according to the power that worketh within him Oh, bless his name. Somebody give God some glory in this house. The Lord is worthy of the praise. Last night she talked about perpetual praise. That means that no matter what I'm going through, my praise won't stop. No matter what I'm dealing with, my praise won't stop. In spite of the way I feel, my praise won't stop. No matter what they say about me, I still got to praise. I still owe God the glory. Somebody bless his name in this house. Yeah. Has God ever done anything good for you? Has he ever brought you out of anything? Then you ought to give God praise. I ought not have to tell you, but it ought to be instantaneously. When I look back over my life and I think about where I was to where I am right now, I owe it all to him. Oh, bless his name. Uh, Y'all, excuse me, I get a little excited, but God is worthy. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Yes. We give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, who thought it not robbery, To die on an old rugged cross for a sinner like me. We thank God for the Holy Spirit which is our comfort, our leader, and our guide and teaches us all spiritual truth. We thank God for the angel of this house, Pastor Stephanie. An awesome woman of God. And one thing I like about Pastor Stephanie is that she doesn't try to imitate anybody else. She stands flat-footed and she teaches the word of God. Some of us are hoopers, some of us are not. But she's very effective in her teaching. Par excellent, if I could choose those words. And to her husband, Deacon Stratford. The first gentleman. To the officers and members of the Ecclesia Church family. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And give honor to our co-pastor, co-pastor Harris. And we thank God for the invite. And now is time to do the work. For those of you who have your Bibles, will you turn with me to Exodus, the 14th chapter? Beginning at the 10th and ending at the 15th verse. That is Exodus 14, 10 through 15. Once you found it, let it be known by saying amen. Amen. And if you don't have it, say give me a second. Amen. Second is pretty quick, isn't it? (laughs) You ought to be able to laugh and enjoy God in church. You ought to be able to smile. You know, back in the day, they they, they thought that the more you frowned, the more saved you were. But I'm happy about the Savior that I serve. I'm satisfied with the Savior that I serve, the one that delivered me from myself. Oh, bless his name. And it reads on this wise. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, and they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us, to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is it not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptian? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptian than that we should die in the wilderness. 
And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom, you, whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore crowdest thou unto me? Speak unto the, Ill, the children of Israel that they go forward. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Father, we thank you now for this is your hour of preaching time. Help Vincent to decrease, but the man of God to stand in the boldness and the authority of your word. That your word may go forth and accomplish that which you desire to accomplish and to encourage and to uplift and to edify. We give you glory, honor, and praise in the name of our, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Might we all say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Look at your neighbor and just say, go forward. go forward. Say it one more time. Go forward. Go forward. Tonight, I don't, I don't have an elaborate, catchy thing. But what I do have is a word from the Lord. Amen. Amen. I wonder if I were to ask you, what is the will of God for your church or for you as an individual, what would you say? That's an interesting question, isn't it? I mean, what would you say is God's will for this church? And what is God's will for you as an individual? There would probably be many answers to this as there are people present here today. Such answers as we're soul winners, drawing closer to the Lord, giving more or greater service to the Lord and the church, being a better spouse or parent, being a better teacher or preacher, just to name a few. Many of us have an idea of what the will is for the church, so we think. But I've discovered that many people have their opinions, but what does God have to say? I've discovered that people will always give you what they think, but they won't give you what the word says concerning your situation. And so as we live in a day and a time like this, when we're talking about going forward, how many of you know that there are obstacles that will be placed in your way to keep you from fulfilling that which God has called you to fulfill? And I did a little research on the number six. And one of the things it, it dealt with humanity is, the man, is humanity. It deals with man. And on the sixth day, man was created. And then it also talked about six represented imperfection as well. But what I came to let you know is that God is doing a new thing in Ecclesia. And I know that going forward, there have been some trials and some tribulations that have taken place. Because in every church, you got some doubters and you have some powders. You have some instigators and you have some haters. But one thing that I've learned that there's only one visionary in the house. You may not understand the vision completely, but if you trust the God in the woman of God, then you'll allow her to be all that God has called her to be. I'm talking about going forward. No man is an island and no man stands alone. That means we all need to work together, but there's, oh, bless his name. We have a whole lot of people that want to be the chief. But we don't want to be the Indians. Somebody has to be a follow and somebody has to lead. Am I right about it? Oh, bless his name. And so, but probably the words of verse 15 are the heartbeat of what God is telling us today. Go forward. Now, first of all, I must understand the word forward carries the idea of advancement or progress. If you look over the history of Ecclesia, do you see progress? I looked at the pictures on the wall and I see what was to what is. That indicates to me that going forward is in your mind. Said going forward is on your mind. But not just in the beauty of the building, but in your praise and your worship and your study of the word of God. Because you have a woman of God here that's capable and willing to teach you, to help you, to learn the word of God. Because guess what? You're not always going to have a preacher around to tell you what to do. 
And most of the time when we give you what God gives us, we don't, you don't want it anyway. Uh, I know it's tight, but it's right. See, see, bishops have a way of doing certain stuff. I'm new in this calling, but, you know, we throw stuff out there, and we don't really care if we get friends afterwards. I just want you to be empowered and know that God has your best interests at heart. And if, Now, if, if you stand with the leader as she goes forward, those that are around her will go forward as well. I'll get to the history of the text in a few minutes, but I just want to break a little ground for a few minutes. And so now we talk about advancement or progress. In the original, in the original, it means to pull up, especially the tent pegs, or go forward. It's time to move on. This is what God wants all of us as a body of individuals to do. The problem is many of our churches and many of us as individuals have become stationary. I'm satisfied where I am. I'm content where I am. Look what we've accomplished. Look what we've done. If it had not been for the Lord, nothing that you've accomplished would have been able to have been done. But you find, I, I've learned this, and, and I remember when our Bishop Reed did the sanctuary, people became comfortable because they had a new building to worship in. They weren't praising him the way they were praising him before they got cushion pews they weren't praising him before the way they were before they got central air I, I remember when they used to knock the windows out of the church and steal the equipment out of the church but we got advanced now and now people want to slack up on God talking about going forward Woo. am I alright oh bless his name we are fixed or stationary and we are not moving or not capable of being moved. You ever seen the spirit of God moving and certain people just don't move at all? I can be preaching and sweating and I'm sweating anyhow because it's natural for me. But sweating and pouring out and, and I'm looking at you and I'm saying, is God moving in your life? Are you comprehending anything that I'm saying to you? I see no reaction. I see no response. It's just some people, nothing moves them. But let something happen to them. They'll move then. God wants us to advance and to progress. God's message to the church is, I don't want you to be stationary. I don't want you to become content where you are. But there are greater things ahead for ecclesia, and there are greater things ahead for cathedral deliverance ministry. Don't be limited by what you've accomplished now, but go forward. Woo. Some of us have been camped out in the place of hurt feelings, for so long and it's time to pull up the stakes and go forward. Some of us have been camped out in the place of anger for too long. It's time for us to pull up our stakes and move forward. Some of us have been camped out in the place of depression for too long. It's time for us to pull up our stakes and go forward. Some of us have been camped out in the place of bitterness for too long. It's time for us to pull up our stakes and go forward. And some of us have been camped out in the place of depression. Where we allow things to hinder us from doing what God has called us to do. Some of us have been camped out in the place of laziness. Am I right about it? I, I've discovered that there's some lazy folks in the church. They always want something, but they don't want to ever do anything. I'm not saying that you have that here, but trust me, some of them my folks I deal with, they work me extra hard. Ah, bless his name. Some of you have been camped out in the place of easiness or comfort for too long. And it's time to pull up the stakes and go forward. And this is the one we talked about earlier. Some of us have, are camped out in the place of satisfaction. I'm good right where I am. I don't want to go any further. I'm comfortable. I, I, don't, I, I don't like 
unfamiliar territory. I don't like to go into areas that I don't really know about. But God specializes in taking us into unfamiliar territory. Because when we become too comfortable, we think it's all about us. But then God wants us to fully rely on him. God is ready to take you on a journey. He's ready to take you to a place that's not with depression, but with joy and happiness. He's ready to take you out of the place of laziness and the spirit of I don't care. You got some folk that really don't care. But God has the power to turn that thing around. And so here we're dealing with the setting of the text. The children of Israel have been delivered from the strong, the strong oppressive hand of Pharaoh. God with a mighty deliverance had brought them out of Egypt to the land, out of Egypt, the land of slavery and oppression. They had started their journey with high hopes and expectations towards the land of promise. But they have marched only a few days and suddenly they seem to be stopped in their journey. The Bible records that they, were, they have encamped by the sea. Before them is the great Red Sea. On either side of them is a mountain. And behind them are Pharaoh and his army closing in fast. On the surface, it seems they are hopelessly trapped. For all practical purposes, there was no way out. But in the midst of chaos and confusion, the people came to Moses and began to cry out to him. And as they cried to him, Moses goes to God and he says, God, what do you want me to do? They are getting ready to stone me. What in the world do you want me to do? And that's just like God setting us up as leaders. Giving us just a little bit. Telling us to go forward and trust me. And when you make your move, those that you serve or those that you're teaching and praying for, they begin to murmur and complain because there's a little heat in the kitchen. Because there's a little trouble in the atmosphere. And so they felt like Moses had brought them to a place and a position in their lives where they should have stayed in Egypt, continued to live in slavery, rather than trust God and believe that their deliverance was on the way. You've got some folk in the church that would rather stay in slavery to sin rather than be delivered by the power of God. His word is what delivers us. His word is what makes us whole. But there are some people that don't really want to hear the word. I'm going to preach this according to the Holy Spirit. I got a lot of notes up here, but I'm going to roll with the Holy Ghost right now. There are a lot of us that when, as long as it's going well, we praise and we worship. But as soon as a little trouble comes, as soon as a little chaos comes, the God that we say, I'm going to trust in the Lord until I die. We begin to get emotional. We begin to get fickle. And then we have nerve enough to try to turn on the leader and tell the leader, you sure you know what you're doing? Are you really hearing from God? Is this God talking to you? But if you really want to go forward, you've got to trust the leader as they follow God. Ooh, bless his name. I know my folk don't understand me and sometimes I don't understand God but I trust him enough to do what he said do. And I believe you have a woman of God that has been trusting God for the ministry of ecclesia. And then they got nerve enough to get mad with the leader. But the Bible declares, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Be careful how you put your mouth on the man and the woman of God because God will take care of you. God will vindicate the leader. Ooh. Oh, bless his name. I feel pretty good. I feel pretty happy down in my soul. Oh, bless his name. But there is a vision that God has birthed in the woman of God for this particular church. Matter of fact, the church is really in you. Wherever you go, if you confess and you've been born again, the church is in you. So whether you're in a building, this is where we come 
to, re- to worship and to praise and to fellowship together. But when you leave out of here is when your church goes with you. What you learn here, you're supposed to take it out in your church. And then you're supposed to minister to somebody else. But if you're talking about going forward, we've got to use what we've learned to help somebody else. The Bible declares that sheep begot sheep. We feed and you go out and you bring them in and then we feed them. Don't you try to clean them up. You just get them in. It's the leader's job to clean them up. Oh, bless his name. I, I, I feel God moving in here. But going forward means that there's a, a, an advancement or you're moving ahead. You're not going backwards. You're not retreating, but I'm going forward. And so as I looked at the text and I began to see how they began to murmur and complain and Moses went to God. Now, 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 now you got to understand the Red Sea was before them. Mountains on both sides. Pharaoh was behind vastly approaching. But I remember in the text that it said, the Egyptians whom you see now, you will never see again. He had already spoken a prophetical word. I know they coming, but they are getting ready to be annihilated. I know your haters and your enemies are coming, but God is about to bust a move on them. God God is about to deliver you from the hand of the oppressors, the one that kept you in captivity. And you mean to tell me you you would have rather stayed there trying to make those bricks with straw? Oh, bless his name. Working endlessly and tirelessly, never being appreciated. But always look down on in your mind because you're so used to Egypt. You have an Egypt mentality. You don't really want to go forward. And some of us have been in church for a long time, but we're still in bondage. We're still in Egypt. We're still held captive. We don't want to be set free. We don't want to be made whole. But I declare if you ever get a touch from God. You will go forward. And I got to say this. Some folk going to leave anyway. I'm so happy now that that I'm not worried about who going to leave. I have been delivered. They can be the praise team leader, but if they leave, God got another one coming. They can be the biggest tither, but God got another one. They can play musical instruments, but guess what? God got another musician that's meant just for us. We're talking about going forward. You can't live in the past and go forward. You can't talk about what Aunt Jane and Uncle Jim used to do in their church. Y'all help me. I'm about to have a fit. If you've ever been down that street, you know, you know, six year anniversary of the ministry. There have been some bumps. There have been some heartaches. And sometimes I'm sure that they may have felt like, God, what we going to do next? But you're still standing through everything you've been through. You're still standing. That's deserving of a praise from God. And little is much in the mighty hands of God. But not only in the church, we're talking about going forward in your spiritual walk. Going forward in breaking away from all these generational curses that keep us from fulfilling the things that God has called us to fulfill. Just because my grandparents may have been alcoholics does not mean I'm going to be an alcoholic. Just because one grandparent may have had prostate cancer doesn't mean I'm going to have cancer. Right now, this hip... Every time I stand to preach now, the hip want to hurt because I twisted it.
doing something. It's fine until I stand up to preach. But guess what? I'm healed and I'm whole and I'm going forward. And so now, for all of you that want to stay camped out in Egypt, you stay there, but God will bring a new group in that will rise above you. You still in Egypt, and they on their way to the promised land. They're on their way to victory. Guess why? Because they trust the woman of God. They trust the word that's in the woman of God. And they're walking by faith and not by sight. You can't believe everything you see out of these eyes. If God said it, that settles it. Woo. Give me about 15 more minutes, and I don't believe I'm going to take that long. I'll be finished according to the leading of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Woo. We, we, we think that when we come to church that we just come to hear a good word and then we go on about our business. And I know I'm, I'm a country boy from Petersburg, Virginia, so I may not speak proper all the time. But is and ain't applies to my situation. Do you understand me? Oh, bless his name. I feel God moving in here in the area of going forward. Because even us as preachers, we can get stuck in the past. We can get stuck when things start to bombard us. And especially when, excuse me, Negroes get on your nerves. It'll even make you question your anointing. It'll make you question, God, did you really tell me this? But you know in your heart he told you. And so you've got to walk and go forward no matter how they look at you, no matter what they say about you, no matter whether they understand it or not, but trust the God in you. I came in here and I was... Looking around, I was looking at, I said, when I grow up one of these days, I'm, I'm going to have me some good looking like this. I'm thankful for what we do have. So you got to be thankful for what you do have. And then God can bless you. I'm not hating on her. I'm, I'm thankful for Pastor Stephanie. I'm thankful for Ecclesia. And the hospitality that you have bestowed towards me and my wife. And I was caught between two messages and, and the Lord said, go forward. And I said, but this one sounds a little bit more better than go forward. You, you know how we look for a catchy theme and, you know, we, we, we try to do that thing. And, and the one he gave me was put your foot on it. But, but. That's for, another, that's for another day, but that wasn't it. <laughs> but if you're going forward, you have to make an advancement, so you have to actually put your foot on it. You have to go forward, but I ain't going to touch that right now. Matter of fact, because I need to stay where I am. But, but I want you to understand that in everything that we go through as a body of Christ, the devil's job is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. And abundantly is simply walking in increase. Anybody want to walk in increase? But there's a cost to be paid to walk in increase. There's some suffering that comes along with increase. There's some pain and there's some hurt that comes along with increase. But if you make it through the storm, when you come to your Red Sea, God told them, use what you got. The rod in your hand, the Egyptians that you see today, you will no longer see anymore. In other words, God is simply saying to us, those haters, the enemies that tried to destroy you, that tried to destroy the work of the ministry, they did not prevail because you were at the Red Sea, but you used what you had, which is the word of God. And the word of God is what brought you to the place where you are right now. And so we ought to tell God, thank you, because you allowed us to see another anniversary. Thank you, because all the hell that we went through to get here, you still provided, you still made a way. You brought us out with a praise on our lips, thanksgiving in our hearts, joy down in our soul. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Is God worthy of the praise?
And then I read a little pamphlet and it said, Ecclesia is either sent out or called out. Uh-huh. And when you are sent out or called out, you're set up to be picked on, to be talked about, to be ridiculed. Because folk will tell you, all these churches we got around here, why you got to start another church? Uh huh. But God has a specific core group of people on your hit list. Just like he got them on Pastor Warren's hit list. And just like he got them on my hit list. And some of you are being groomed to go out. Oh, y'all. Yeah, uh huh. Y'all being groomed to go out. Because there's some work in some of you. But guess what? You got to stay in school for a little while longer. You haven't graduated yet. Just because you have a few scriptures under your belt, because you know a few things, does not mean that you're anointed to pastor. There are people that preach way better than me, but they may not be anointed to pastor. You got to be able to deal with some complicated folks and some complex folks that have a history of issues that they need to be delivered from. And you can't treat everybody like the same person. I don't know how I got there, but I'm going to walk in it. If you feel that this is a glorified position, I need to give you a clue. I didn't lose my hair voluntarily. I had a little help. And if it grows back, it's white on the sides. And if you want a living example of what being a leader is, look at our president and from where he started to how gray his hair is now. He got six years under his belt, right? In six years, he looked like he'd been there 40. And I want to let you know, preaching is a hard job. It don't start here. It starts before you get here. Ooh, I'm just trying to help you out. I'm, I'm going to take my seat in a few minutes. But oh, bless his name. I hope I don't wear out my welcome. But it's all good anyway. Ah, oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. Ah. When you fail to go forward, the first thing you're going to do you, that's going to happen to you is you're going to stop walking by faith and start living in fear. Did you hear me? When you fail to go forward, you will stop walking by faith and start living in fear. Guess why? Because those things that stop your progress or try to hinder you from going forth, you will soon become afraid of them. Look at the children of Israel. They got scared. They murmured. I should have stayed where I was. Well, you go ahead and go back, but ain't no going back for me. Woo. If you are filled with fear, You'll hurt me and you'll hurt yourself. Scared folk are some dangerous folks. Scared folk are treacherous folk. If you ever had your back up against the wall, when you thought you were in danger and you feared for your life, you would do anything that you had to do to get out of that state. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Getting me scared. I'm subject to act like a fool. And I'm still saved. But I'm not scared of the enemy. And the tactics that he tried to use against me. Because I'm telling you. Now, now, now I'm going to give you how I know. That I, I don't walk by what I see. But I walk by faith. When. 
I started going through all these issues with the little health issues. And the first thing the enemy told me was, you know, you cancer run in your family. Most of my mother's siblings um, died from cancer. A lot of my relatives died from cancer. And then I looked at the other side, but my grandfather, they lived a long time. There's longevity. So I don't have to accept that I'm going to die before I reach 50. My mother died before she reached 50. My uncle died before he reached 50. Had one that, there's one, one of my mother's siblings is still living, and he's 64 or 5 now. But my, grand, my great-grandparents lived to be in their 90s. I was, able, I was grown. They were married 71 years before the first one died. They had about 18 children. Yeah, and they had a whole bunch of twins in the mix. They were doubling up on birthdays. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because in going forward, the enemy will try to use anything to make you feel that this is it, this is final, it's over. But the devil is a liar. I'm not going to live in fear concerning that. Next, you will start murmuring and complaining. It wasn't long before fear replaced faith and then complaining set in. They started to complaining to Moses. Instead of being marching victoriously, they were now standing and worried about what they were facing. Isn't that ironic? You speak in life, and death comes. Negative vibes come. Then you got those that circulate through the church. I don't know what the pastor talking about, but I don't think that's the right thing to do. I don't, I don't see what she see. I don't see what he see. I, 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 God ain't showed me that you're not the leader. There's something that we all are familiar with. Stay in your lane. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't drive, don't, 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 don't get in somebody else's driver's seat. Because you're a wreck. And then you'll cause casualties to take place. <laughs> Third, you are possessed with a backsliding spirit. <laughs> uh huh. Because if you refuse to go forward and you re you'd rather go backwards, then you, what you're doing, you're sliding backwards. Uh -huh. And this is one, and I've got to get these points out. If you aren't going forward, you are hindering somebody behind you from going forward. You in the way. You are in the way. They can't step into their rightful place because you refuse to go forward. You satisfied in that position, but God trying to move you forward so he can bring the next person in line to succeed you. And I tell him at home all the time, I am not a permanent fixture in this pulpit. I will not be here forever. So somebody, God has to raise somebody else to go from point A to point B. I'll take it to this far, and then somebody else is going to take it to the next level. But while I'm here, it's my spot. While I'm here, it's my spot. I just happen to share it with my wife, but we spotting together. So when we refuse to go forward, we hinder the next person in line from being able to advance. This is something to think about, isn't it? Woo. Who 
is standing behind you. And I know some of us feel you can't do what I do. I'm the best thing since sliced bread. I'm the best thing that ever happened to this church. But I'm here to tell you nobody is irreplaceable. From the pulpit to the back door. Mm. Woo. I'm almost finished. Finally, when you fail to go forward, you prevent yourself from seeing the miraculous. If you're waiting on manifestation of miracles to take place, you've got to be, you got to be willing to go into uncharted waters. You've got to be willing to go into unfamiliar ground. God, I don't really know what you're trying to do. I don't really understand where you're trying to take me to. But if you lead, I'm going to follow. And if you tell me to go forward, I'm going forward. God, I trust you. I know that the Red Sea is before me. But now you cause the Red Sea to separate. And then you allow the land to dry so we could walk across onto dry land and then when the last of us get across you, I turned around and then you began to consume my enemies those that were trying to destroy me those that were trying to kill me so God I witnessed the miraculous because I was willing to go forward is there anybody in here that's willing to go forward on tonight are you willing to go into uncharted waters are you willing to go down the road that nobody else really wants to go down are you willing to trust God with your whole heart yes Yes. Yes, wherever he leads, I'll follow. I may not have a whole group of people with me, but if I have to go by myself, I'll go alone. If the church don't want to go, I'll go alone. But if you really want to be blessed, you'll learn how to follow as I go forward, as I trust in God, as I believe him for the supernatural, the unobtainable, the unheard of, the unimaginable things. I couldn't even conceive in my mind, but God blew my mind because he did something that I didn't expect him to do. He brought me out of something that folk thought was going to destroy me. They thought my ministry was dead, but after six years, I'm still kicking, baby. After six years, I'm still thriving. I'm still going forward. The devil meant it for my bad, but God is working it to my good. And I know he's able to turn that thing around. Somebody give God a praise in here. Yes. I feel the power of the presence and the provision of God in this house. God not only has riches, but God has supernatural things that he's going to do in this place. Miracles will be brought forth in this place. Deliverance will take place. Healing will take place. Woo. I feel God moving. Not just in this house, but in your own personal house. What you learn here, you need to take it home with you. Tell your children, I'm going forward in this house. You can't come in here and do what you want to do. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You, you don't run nothing in here. This house belongs to God. I'm talking about your personal house now. Uh-huh. We, we allow our children to take over our house like they pay the mortgage. Yeah. Woo. The bed you sleep in, I bought it. The food you eat, I paid for it. But yet you think you walk in authority in my house. No, take back your home. If you don't have peace in your house and you're worried about who they're bringing up in your house, change the locks. If they don't want to go by your rules, put them out. Yeah, uh, he kind of rough. No, they're going to have you losing your mind. They're going to have you stroking out. They're going to have you having a heart attack. Because guess what? Sometimes we can train them up. But when they're old, they're, they'll come back. But right now, they just want to make their own testimony. I got, I, got, I, got, I got a couple of mine making their testimony right now. But I'm here to tell you, me and mama had to put two of them out. 
Huh? What? Because if you're trying to go forward, you can't have a whole lot of mess in your camp. And I got to have peace in my home so when I come to church, I, my mind can't be in a thousand places when I'm at home. And then when I try to come to church and try to give the word of God, I'm focused on what's going on in my house rather than focused on what God said shall be. Go forward in your home. The Bible says you can call those things that be not as though they were. In other words, you got the power to speak life in your own situation. This thing is not going to kill me. It's not going to destroy me. But I shall live and not die. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm the lender and not the borrower. Thank you, Jesus. Lord God. Lord, have mercy. He give you a whole lot of notes that I put together. Uh, but God is good. And he's worthy of the praise. And so I would encourage you, when you come to your Red Sea, God says, go forward. You can't move to the right or to the left. You can't go backwards. Go forward. He had to use what he had, that rod that was in his hand. And when he lifted it up, it opened up. How many of you are waiting on some doors to open for you? While you're waiting, keep worshiping. While you're waiting, keep working. Don't take a voluntary leave of absence. And then come back when the dust settle. Amen. But if you learn how to go through something, you can appreciate your victory. Ecclesia, go forward. CDM, go forward. Victory, go forward. In Jesus' name. Y'all give God a hand of praise. Come on and give him glory. Because the Lord is worthy of the praise. And God, no matter what I'm going through, I'm still going forward. I will not allow the tricks or the traps of the enemy to hinder me. But I'm going forward. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually to be in my mouth. I bless your name, God. I give you glory. Oh, thank you, God. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. God, we thank you now for the blessings and the favor of God. We thank you for the opportunity just to share a word. Now, God, as we go forward, every hater, every instigator, every naysayer, every non-believer, God, we cast them back to where they came from. We come against every demonic influence that tries to attack our ministries, but we will have a thriving ministry. We declare a growing ministry. We declare a word teaching and a word reaching ministry. That we would be a beacon light in the midst of a dark world. We decree and we declare by the blood of the lamb that it shall come to pass. And we thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, man of God, for that awesome word. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we don't want to leave. We don't want to take it for granted that we all here are saved and have accepted Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. We just want to give you an opportunity to respond to that word. If you've been feeling something tugging at you, telling you it's time to move forward, to move from the place where you are, Feel free to come forward.
It's an important decision. Even though we decide that we are going to move forward, it's nothing that we can do on our own. We must continually look to the Lord, ask God to guide us and lead us by the power of his Holy Spirit. Every step of the way offering perpetual praise. Amen. Is there one tonight? Waiting on you. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's bless.